I think we might have been going a bridge too far. Politics is war without bloodshed, while war is politics with bloodshed. It's pretty much just a reveal of Clausewitz. Which, you know, if you're Mao Zedong, you know, born in 1940s in China, it actually is kind of impressive that, you know, both him and Clausewitz came up with the same concept. I mean, a lot of it, of course, involves if Mao read Klaus Switch or not. But, you know, it's just overall, there's a good chance he might have. There's a good chance he didn't. But it is kind of interesting that at least that way they kind of had similar concepts. The main difference, of course, is that Mao, basically, his main thought was to slowly grind the Kuomintang into... You know, he wasn't really interested in quick tactical battles and ending the war in like five seconds like Klaus Witz was. So, at least in that aspect, you have to admit that. Yeah, we're going to delete this because we want to be starting something new. Bye-bye, uh, Iron Man Reich. Back to the menu. Da -da. But, you know, overall with Klaus Witz, this was the main problem with Germany, is that they were just way too... You know, they didn't do really do much of strategic planning. They were just interested in just finishing everything as quickly as possible. So in other words, like if they invaded Russia and they didn't win right away... Pretty much they were screwed. Are we going to play ahead? Are we playing as Germany? Of course we are. We're playing as Iron Man mode. Pretty much that's it. I mean, a lot of it, the goal in this playthrough, we're going to take over as much land as possible and then become democratic. The goal is... I'm not interested in taking over the world. The goal is to make everyone like us. Everyone love us. But... It's making as much land as possible in the process. Obviously, we're going to start by taking over Poland. Because that's what I always do. I feel bad for the Poles. But a lot of it is simply... The goal is just to try to make... A Reich. You know, and that's try to make everyone happy. And in such a way... That no one hates us. So we're going to begin with France, actually, of all things. And... We can... Yeah, we're going to begin improving diplomatic relations as soon as we can, because that's what I do. So at least this way, I mean, it's like we'll basically just be doing the Treaty of Apollo. Probably going to be, uh, no, not Apollo, Locarno, my bad. That's too mere light. But, you know, a lot of it is... I don't like, I mean, I'm not really a warmonger, even though I always play games like this. But, you know, a lot of it is simply trying to figure out a way. What have we got to conveyor? Oh, we got, cool, we got the carabiner. One of the better weapons, I think. So, yeah, we got 28 of these. The goal in the beginning is just to spam infantry. You know, the problem with Deutschland is that they generally... generally didn't have a lot of mechanized forces, largely because they didn't have any oil. Which is completely understandable if you think about it. Now a lot of our wars are going to be... I got you, we're good for now. So we are going to try to do some sort of... Especially in the beginning, because we are going to be doing some wars in the beginning. Mainly as soon as I'm possible, capable of it, I'm, I'm going to attack Poland. Just to make this, I don't know, maybe Germany could, yeah, it's, we'll have a little bit bigger of an area. Even if that's like the only war we have in this entire playthrough, which I doubt. So that'll be kind of impressive. As we all know, Germany just pretty much just lost and went to the Oder and East. So it's kind of like, you know, if I do something superior... At the end, I'd actually be kind of happy, especially because I don't really play this game that much and don't really know like all the little ins and outs of it. So what do we got? Is there a store? 
Noings in if you're in Dryzig, if you're in Dryzig, type 2 Oz, which is good. I mean, it's got the hipper. Actually, we know it's the hipper. Doesn't even say. That sucks. Oh, right, Admiral Grass Bay, Sean Horace, nice and L. Nice and L. Never how I pronounce it. Alright, good. Everything is good for that. I don't have any division to basic. They'll change soon enough. What are we doing? Are we going to our island? Of course not. I'm not that dumb. We could get some like run experience, I think would be nice. Actually, I don't like that at all. Furiaris plan. Shocked, which is nice, but overall the goal is just to make some friends. Here as, as Germany, I want to have some friends. And then the goal, of course, with that is to get Hungary and Romania to like us before they go and hang out with someone else. So we're going to have two main ones. Three Panzer armies. Like the Proto SS. It's kind of strange. I mean, it was kind of strange overall what they did with that. It's basically, everyone was trying to develop his own little private army, which I just find kind of weird. I mean, it's, it's just like one of those problems overall. We've got more of them. You know, it's. People say it was because of. This Laban. You know, just the way that's. The way Hitler wanted everything. He wanted like everyone to be fighting against each other for power and stuff like that. I don't really think that. I mean, I am writing a master's thesis on it right now. The main thought process, of course, is that... I don't think Hitler was capable of really running... wasn't really good, that good of a leader. He slept till noon every day. You know, after he slept till noon, he pretty much... You know, ate breakfast, read some newspapers. He kind of like dicked around until two, and then he walked his dog. And then he had a couple hours of monologues every night. I mean, he wasn't really that good of what you would call an organizer. It was really like in many cases his just his subordinates that really, really did all that crap for him, such as like. Himmler, at least when it came to the SS, basically, like, each of the people, Speer, like, the people that sort of ended up having the job, like, that did it, all that crap, pretty much, ultimately, the people that led the uh, Reich, in many cases, were just kind of, like, organizers, and... Largely, they just butt kissed Hitler, obviously, because otherwise they wouldn't have their jobs. But a lot of it was just kind of like, you know, everyone just thinks that Hitler was more of a leader than they think. Which, in my opinion, it wasn't. I really wish I had to. I mean, it's. I wish in many cases I had. Well, I mean, I kind of like the DLC just simply because we could have oil and fuel and all that stuff, but in a lot of cases, like one of the first mods that I downloaded was Rommel as Hitler, and it's the exact same thing as Vanilla Point Four, except instead of Hitler, there was just a picture of uh, Rommel, so you could claim that like Rommel was leading Germany. You know, I kind of like that. I mean, I kind of feel bad for playing as Hitler right now. And I kind of feel bad for taking over Poland as soon as possible. 
you know. Well, at least in that way. What are we playing? Playing a oh, good. Yeah. And I've never really been a fan of, I mean, I kind of like these old ones. I mean, as strange as it sounds, I actually think Hearts of Iron 2 is one of the better ones. You know, in some ways, it's just like the music. It's just like, it's sadder. Because I don't think World War II, World War II should be considered like a happy event. Or a glorious event. I mean, it's... I only saw a couple people die in my life, but for the most part, it's not really that nice watching people die. Or wandering around playing with cutesy little weapons, or... Any shit like that. So the goal is to take over Poland. We're gonna try to rule it nicely. Basically, like, after a couple countries, we're gonna become democratic and then try to provoke a war. We might try to provoke a war after that. You know, a lot of it, it's just, at least in this aspect, it is to make Germany as big as possible without, you know, being considered a warmonger. So, you know, at least in this aspect, we know we could take over Poland, we could do the Anschluss, maybe even the Sudeten land, and then go democratic. And then we could be like, oh, see, we're not like bad, we're a democracy and all. And it's. We just happen to have all this extra land. And then people will, you know, think we're good people or whatever. Even though we would just be flawed people like everyone else. But it doesn't really matter. So, in a lot of cases, a lot of this is just waiting. Waiting until we get about like a thousand infantry equipment. And then we'll just start increasing our... How many... Conquer Donzig. You know, we need 50. Uh, Unless I want to wait a little bit, maybe like you know, a couple months just to have a slightly stronger infantry base. I mean, a lot of the good thing is that we're not really like risking anything. Like we're not we're not like time sensitive or anything simply because historically Germany caused all the wars and at least destabilized everything at least when it comes to Europe so at least in that aspect I think we're playing as historical but I'm not exactly that sure but at least in that aspect I mean it's we could slowly build our army without necessarily being in a situation where um that concerned about you know it's like we don't have to take over other people before they improve relations with Frank Reich get them to like us Which is good. I mean, it's... Historically, I mean, I've never met a and the Hermit Cole. The... I mean, probably one of the most interesting photograph, Like, one of the like, most awe-inspiring ones is that they met together over at Very Dawn and held hands for a little bit. It's a sort of way of burying the hatchet because... I've never been to Very Dawn. The closest I've been to, like, a World War One site was over in Izondo. But, supposedly it wasn't, like, the nicest battle to be part of. So I think I'll, it is a fitting way to at least to try to bury the hatchet. The only problem with the United States now, like, where I live, is that we haven't had our asses handed to us yet. So, at least in that aspect, a lot of them are freaking dumb warmongers still. You know, it's like after Americans, I don't know, it's... We got terror bombed by either the Luftwaffe or the RAF. You know, eventually you might just 
I don't know. Might knock some senses into people. Not to say, I mean, a lot of our policies did make sense, Afghanistan. It made complete sense to go in there after 9-11, because otherwise you're, like... The only problem, of course, it wasn't really at one of those situations where... There wasn't anything we could really do to, like, win. Because, you know, the Taliban would just simply hang out in the mountains and stuff, and then ambush us. And so a lot of it was... At least in the aspect, even like the administration proper, they just didn't like the Bush administration. They didn't really seem to understand that, you know, they think of like the Taliban as like a Nazi Germany, you know, like a state. Like during World War II, we could bomb the German state, and if we invade up uh, of their territory, eventually they'll call uncle. And they can't really do it with, like, in Afghanistan because you're kind of meeting up funny just a bunch of, like, nutballs that are just hanging out in caves and stuff. It's more tri tribal instead of countries. And in fact, in many ways, I almost consider it, like, even the whole 9-11 thing, it's... It was, it was, it was kind of basically an act of war, but... At least in that as been in the aspect too, it's almost like a criminal operation too. And that you just have a bunch of people decide to blow up a bunch of people for no reason. Largely to get us out of Saudi Arabia. That was the whole you know, the overall thought process of Osama's operations in the first place. Like if we did that, it will, be, it will convince us to get out of Saudi Arabia. Because he didn't want us anywhere near Mecca or Medina. You know, and it's... At least in that aspect, of, I mean, it's overall, it's... I'm happy when in Afghanistan. It was probably useful. The only place I've been close to it was Kuwait. I was just there for 30 days. It sucked. Just hot and steep, hot and sunny. But overall, I just don't really see the point behind the overall process of invading Iraq. Putting as Iraq was just a bee's nest, a hornet's nest. Yeah, the Kurds up here, who hated the Sunnis here, who hated the Shia here, and each one of these things are all divided into little tribes too, who all hate each other and. If they're fighting an outside force like us, or Saddam, they're all fighting each other. And then we just pretty much went into that mess and just smashed it with a baseball bat. And never even during basic training, we had a drill sergeant who was bragging that she ran over a bunch of kids on a Humvee while she was running a Humvee. I don't know if that was true or not, but you shouldn't be bragging about crap like that. You know, it's... I don't know about you, but if I had, uh, like, a kid and some American soldier ran over my kid, I'd be kind of angry at America as a whole. You have to win the hearts and minds, you know, if they're shooting you. It freaking sucks. And in that aspect, it just makes sense that... It just makes sense not to even go in there in the first place. And just be hated with Saddam. We could give them give some underground ground units, some weapons... And in many cases, instead of bringing us over there because soldiers aren't the most intelligent people in the world. I mean, most of them are just, tell, you know, it's just like, you don't want to bring people over there. If you're going to, if you're going to try to like occupy a country, you don't want to be having the SS going over there. Like the problem is Hitler could have easily took it over to Soviet Union. The problem is, is that he treated them like shit. I mean, people didn't like uh, Stalin, but they're kind of like between like a rock and a hard place in that point. Like, who am I gonna side with, Stalin or Hitler? Like, if you're a Pol if you're a Russian peasant, let's say in Belarus or even the Ukraine, because if Hitler went into the Ukraine and tr treated them nicely, Ukraine would have loved them. You know, that's like the whole thing. It's, it's 
you know, a lot of cases you're going to have to destroy the enemy force, but after that, then it's, it's almost kind of like this, like, psych ops thing. You have to, like, get the local populace to like you. Like, giving, giving like, adults, like, food and vodka, giving kids candy, just trying to, like, win hearts and minds. And if a country is incapable, if, like, a force is incapable of doing that, then you're pretty much... Shouldn't be involved in it at all, I think. You know, at least that's my opinion, but... Yeah, that's sort of Oracle now. Who are we gonna conquer? Donzig, get these lost provinces. Yeah. We don't have to make sure, you know, a lot of it in this situation. It's just trying to... You know, a lot of the, at least in this situation, it's trying to figure out a way in this as you know, it's the only problem with like that overall thought process of like good people and evil people is that it doesn't exist. Most people are just somewhere in the middle. And usually if you're an outside force just barging into an... It's kind of like if... I don't know. If you live in America and like... I don't know. China decide to invade into your country. I mean, it's for the most part, you're going to hate them. Because as much as you hated your own government... They're kind of like your government, you know? So it's it's kind of like it, it's like one of those situations where it's if you were a Chinese soldier in that situation, like what would you actually do to try to get the people to like you, you know? And it's more difficult than you think. At least get them to like calm down and not hurt you and. Things like that. So at least in this aspect, yeah, we are going to take over Poland. But the goal is just to reduce the resistance as quickly as possible, improve compliance, and try to get them to like us. You know, it's like ideally it's just going to be something similar to the board in Star Trek. Like, instead of Germany and Poland... There's going to be, like, germ, germ land, like, half Germany, half Poland. We'll take the good things of Poland. We'll take the good things of Germany. And then we'll try to, like, balance that to remainder, you know? At least in this case, it seems like that's probably the best bet to go. What have we got here? Yeah, those things. The Navy's not really going to be a part of this operation. Heinkel's Junkers. Mr. Schmidt. Every person saw Not a lot, but. Once again, it is kind of easy that we are just going to be outnumbering Poland when it comes to an Air Force and to the, from the get go, so at least in that aspect. And if we outnumber them on land, too, the goal is just. Uh, I have no real worries about this. So then it's in this situation. A lot of it's just thinking, you know. Not even just a play through, it's we're thinking about life. What's the point of life? Why do we live? Why do we die? Crap like that. I mean, the problem with this guy is that, for the most part, he thought, like, he actually believed in crap. And it was, a lot of it, I think, a lot of his thinking, I mean, he was like a, a nut from the get-go, obviously, but the 
problem with the Treaty of Versailles, all it did was just blame Germany for everything. Now, the problem is if you're a German soldier fighting for four years in the trenches, you pretty much just laughed at it, thinking, you're, you know, you're like a bitter loser. Straight here. Bitter loser. You want revenge. You want to make sure that, like, your fighting wasn't in vain. You, know, you just watched all your colleagues die for, like, all your, like, comrades die for four years straight. And then at the end, they're, like, these fellows just blamed you for everything. You know, it's... There wasn't really any opportunity for Germ for Germany to have, like, some sort of, like... I don't know. It kind of reminds me a lot of Reconstruction in America. If you read uh, Lincoln's second address, it talked about, you know, malice towards none, things for all... And even in many cases, like, uh, even when Grant, uh, I mean, Grant and Lee met at Appomattox, Sherman and Johnson met, a lot of it was, a, you know, they were, tr like, the surrender terms were extremely generous. And a lot of it, it's like, they were trying to, like, win hearts and minds back. Like, even though I understand that you fought against us for four years, but... You know what? Let's just all try to get back together again. You know, it was like a way just to try to like solve it. Like, because you're going to have a bruised ego if you lose the war. So the last thing you need to do is just blame someone for, for starting the war. Cause them to pay you trillions of dollars in reparations. And taking a bunch of your land to boot. You know, in like a situation like that, it's all you're really doing is just pissing the person off, and that's why they're gonna be hiring dingbats like this. And if you don't believe me, just put yourself inside of the shoes of a German soldier, say born in 1896. You fought for the you fought like in four years, watched every single one of your family members basically either die from the war itself or starving to death due to, due to the British blockade. I mean, it's. And at the end of it, they, you know, it's. You don't really want to consider yourself a war criminal, regardless of what you did. Just one of those things. Like, overall, about World War One, it was. It'll sad like that, simply just because I think they... Don Tan eventually won the war, but they definitely lost the peace. You know, in comparison, after World War II, yeah, we did, like, conquer all Germany and occupy it. But at the same time, we did give them trillions of dollars to rebuild their economy. We rebuilt the Schengen, you know... A lot of it, I think, was just a rapprochement between France and Germany proper. It's, you know, they were able to, like, develop some sort of, like, United Europe to Schengen Agreement and stuff like that. And then instead of, like, isolating Germany, in many ways, they almost kind of invited them to, like, reparticipate re in world affairs proper. At least in that aspect, you know, I think that was, like, as soon as it sounds, it was one of those ways that... That's probably what prevented World War Three. At least with uh, Germany not trying to get revenge. The problem is, of course, is that tensions with the Soviet Union started. There was detente, which, you know, eventually that was probably units. I don't want to sound like a bleeding heart liberal, but at the same time, it's... You need that soft, like, reproachment. Because otherwise, the Soviet Union had a large number of nuclear weapons. If we had nuclear weapons, and we would have just killed each other. And you wouldn't be alive right now. And if you're not a bleeding, and if you claim to be, like, in favor of liberty and freedom, I'd recommend that you just go to, like, this little area over here, and then you'll just realize that there aren't really good people. There aren't bad people. Basically, everyone's somewhere in the middle. 
and it's a lot more confusing than you think. Build these two battleships and just get them over with. even school shootings. The problem with school shootings is that people don't really seem to realize they're pretty much if there was some sort of system to sort of like calm them down I think a lot of those could be prevented. You know pretty much you're just giving you're just creating a social outcast just by like school bullying and crap and eventually they can't take it anymore. And then the people that like the popular kids in school, the preppies, the jocks and stuff, they all run around and begin crying and claim they're victims, even though, for the most part, they don't really sit back and realize that they played a large part in it themselves. So for the most part, at least in that aspect, at least more confusing than you think. But regardless, we are German Reich. We're going to be checking over Poland. The goal in this situation is to get Lebensraum. The only way we could get Lebensraum is that we take over Poland, and then we begin mass spamming condoms and developing birth control and giving them both to the Germans and to the Poles. That will reduce the birth population by a lot. And everyone will have all the room they don't want. I think that's the best thing. That's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be conquering Poland. We're going to be conquering as much Europe as possible. Then we're going to reduce the population. A lot of problems are simply caused because of, like, too much population, I think. At least I live in New Jersey and central New Jersey and everyone's over on top of each other. Everyone's just ripping down trees trying to build McMansions and crap like that. Overall, I guess I just have a hate, more of a hatred for humanity than most people. And I guess that's just one of those things about getting older. When you get older and you get more embittered, you just, I don't know. You know, at least take it over Ethiopia. Go figure. Why wouldn't they? I mean, they're at war with them, so you might as well. See how a relation to going with Frank Reich. You know, Frank Reich's liking me, which is good. We'll get Frank Reich to like me, and we'll get Italians to like me. Maybe even Britain, Gross Britannian. And England. One of the more gamey things you could do is just get America to turn fascist. But I don't want America to turn fascist. We're pretty much heading down that direction right now. Historically, it's most democracies, they either fracture into uh, communist states or, you know, they either go to the left or to the right. America, I think, is verging way too much to the right. The population itself is probably turning more liberal, and that scares conservatives, and therefore. They're pretty much in control of the army and the police force now, so that's all they need to pretty much turn us into some sort of dictatorship under the guise of democracy. At least that's how historically most countries went down that road. And then you get the situation where you have a constitution that guarantees freedom of speech, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and... Pretty much you have a lot of policies that, a lot of it I think is just because of the surveillance state. I mean, not the Gestapo and even the Stasi in many aspects, they didn't have like video cameras and 
stuff like that. I mean, a, a lot of it is like they're just saying they had the technology to like spy on people as much as we do now. You know, they didn't have cell phones, so you can't really like look into your citizens' text messages, stuff like that. Kind of like we can can now. Obviously, if they could do that, they would have. And back then, for the most part, I was just informants and crap. It's just the way the world works, I guess. I mean, it's... The one thing I do hate is that they claim, like... The whole corona thing... All the social isolation, I think, is, is absolutely vital. And for the most part, I just hate it like they were like claiming like they're like freedom fighters and stuff. In that situation, there needs to be at least some sort of tamping down. Is there anyone to like blame for the coronavirus? The answer is no. Because even if you notice that like when the whole thing started, was China trying to hide stuff? Of course they were. I mean, they don't want to like they wanted to make it all out less thing, but you know, you have to notice. Like after a couple of days, they did lock down Wuhan. When that did not work, they tried to lock down a larger area. They were trying to do things the best they could. And if you think about it, the Americans are whining and crying that they can't go to the beach of Florida and shit. So I think if it broke out in America, we would be doing a far worse job at it, in order to because Americans are just fucking spoiled. You know, and there isn't really much solidarity in America anymore, either. Well, there wasn't really much to begin with, this largely because Americans just hate each other. I mean, the, the funny thing, I think, is because the reason we hate each other is because... Actually, because we're mostly just immigrants. You know, we're a nation of immigrants... And for that reason, it is like a you know like a weird situation that you can't really. The hell! It's probably just gonna go away. Yeah, I got five of those. <sighs> but regardless, I mean, it's, it's weird to say, I, don't just, I think it's just because we're a native immigrant, so we don't really have, like, a common culture. Yeah, we got enough motorized. All right, time to, cons uh, motorized. You, let me just put this one of them, because that's all we can fucking afford, obviously. Yeah, we got the Opal Blitzes with some carabiners, we'll get those in a second. But, you know, it's just because of that we don't have a common culture, so you don't really get that solidarity. Plus, if you're born in a McMansion, like a lot of American, like, I guess pretty much the only, I don't know, it's, people like to isolate themselves and turn it, turn themselves into little cliques. And when you do that, unfortunately, you can't really meet other people. And if you don't meet other people, that's when stereotypes begin developing. And when stereotypes begin developing, pretty much eventually you're going to do is just start moving them to concentration camps because you think they're evil. What is their combat over here? But, you know, it's like things like that, that. That's how war start. That's how genocide start. Largely, it's just because two groups of people don't communicate with each other. And once you don't communicate with each other, then you begin developing stereotypes. And next thing you know, you're deporting into the East for a resettlement.
Because if you think about it, even Hitler, when he was a kid, he was, uh, his family was on, like, had tough times once in a while. So uh, a doctor was treating his family free of charge. And actually, to his credit, he supposedly did, like, he was dedicated to his family. He was trying to help his mom when she was dying of cancer. And Hitler was actually really grateful for this. So when he turned into power and began, like, persecuted the Jews, he allowed this guy to emigrate to America, like he was able to get the connections, and he allowed him to live with all, leave with all his money. As you guessed, the doctor was Jewish. So in that situation, like, he knew that Jew, and for that situation, you know, he made an exception for him. Emil Maurice, he was, uh, like, one of Hitler's, like, early bodyguards. He was, uh, he had Jewish descent. I know he wasn't, like, 100% Jewish, but he was apparently Jewish enough that Hitler wanted to kick him out of the SS. And Hitler told him no. Because, and he told him to make an exception for his case. Last why he began hearing about all these things called, like, uh, honorary Aryans. You know, Heydrich made arrangements for all of the for the entire Polish fencing team to be treated like relatively kindly. And that was largely because drumroll please, a bunch of them were Jewish. Same with Garen. Like you see like this common theme that like they were making exceptions for people that they knew. I mean, obviously they had no problem killing large swaths of the population that they didn't know. But, you know, that's like one of those things. Like, the more people you know, if you know someone and someone eventually tells you to kill them, you're probably not going to kill them, especially if you like them. Now, if you don't know them, you would have no problem pulling the trigger. So you know in that situation that where if they look different than you or they talk in a scary little language or anything like that. Which is one of one of the reasons why once uh, Hitler started Barbarossa it was easier for him to kill large swaths of the population for that situation. Simply because they look different. And if you notice that Drum roll, please. So it was a little bit more difficult for them to deport all uh, the German Jews and kill them. Or even the French Jews or anywhere in this area. But simply because they look different. Not that they don't look different. They look the same. They acted the same. And because they were roughly the same, it was a little bit more of a burden on someone's conscience to kill them. You know, it's not to make it to downgrade everything. It's just... I guess one, the only way I'm really describing this is that it's like one of those things that if you know people, you're likely not to call them evil. And if you don't know someone, it's pretty easy to call them evil. We're just training these troops up. Give them a couple months of training. The goal, of course, is not to burn too much of our fuel. But in that aspect, it's to burn some fuel, train up our pilots, and when are we going to war anyway? Yeah. We'll train them until like September ish, and then the goal is to build up enough fuel. So that we're, if we're not at max fuel, at least we're pretty damn close when it comes to, like, taking over Poland so we can use our air force as long as possible. Even experiences right now with, with Americans and uh, quote-unquote illegal immigrants. I actually know a couple, and they're good people. And I don't mind having them in my country. And I know a bunch of people, I want American citizens that I wouldn't want in my country. 
the only the people that hate the, hate the immigrants for no other reason than, like, because they're immigrants or illegal or whatever. The funny thing, of course, is that very few of them would readily admit that if you're born in El Salvador in a frickin' goddamn war zone, like over here, and your entire family's just being killed by random gangs all day, you wouldn't want you you would want to get the hell out of Dodge, too. Obviously, the most logical solution in that situation is to go to the one country that has a. I mean, well, we lock more people up than any other country. When we give them, it's not as much that we arrest more people. We just give them longer sentences than everyone else. Largely because Americans like to denigrate black people and brown people. Especially those in power because they want to win elections and you can't win an election if you're considered to be soft on crime. That's why we never change anything in this country. So it's just like that overall. I mean, it's, I'm getting kind of deep in this first episode. Well, first couple episodes. I don't know how I'm going to break this down. I might as well just end this episode now. Yeah, we're going to be... I apologize, I'm a little deep in this first episode. But I am. 